welcome to compliance weekly of 6th of august 2024 uh, let's start with the milestone goals walk through the last one that we discussed was redundant navigation bar uh, when switching up grouping in compliance center uh, Next one is on Cam Camellia, design requirements, configuration, MVC. Yeah, I can quickly talk about this. So thank you, Camellia. We went through a few rounds of feedback and um, um, you know requirements gathering and stuff like that. So I think we got to a very, a really, really good um, solution mm -hmm. in the end. And we've started going through implementation planning now, but um, thank you to Camellia for planning that all out for us. Next one is on SAM group level audit logging shows in corrupt IP address person SAM election affect user permission. Uh, I reviewed this Emma. Uh, so basically it was earlier catching the IP of, it was recording the IP address of uh, the SAML server or somewhere, but now we are uh, logging the IP of of, of a generic IP to uh, not pinpoint to a wrong IP for uh, such auditors. Next one is on Natalia. Uh, supply the framework ID in the URL parameter. Uh, yes, so uh, now we uh, provide a link, a URL for the uh, framework drawer so that we can link to it uh, from the pages. And also the part of this issue, I fixed our URLs for the edit framework because it was um, using GraphQL ID. So I changed it to a normal ID. So now we have beautiful URLs. Uh, next one is on Zephyr. Investigate why upgrade from 1.0 to 2.0 field for one customer. Uh, yep, so we deployed, I mean, we released, uh, we merged the fix for this. Uh, so in future, if a cust I mean, this failure should not occur for customers. Uh, for this one customer, uh, something changed. I mean, they their account got into a blocked state, uh, disabled state. Perhaps their retrial or license expired on Snowflake. So now they have to reinstall the application. So yeah, we're unblocked, we didn't deploy this yet, but this should be released with the next uh, version of Snowflake Connector when we release the, the fix. Next one is on me. Support multiple frameworks and controller and worker. So uh, we simply removed the controller because it was not being used anywhere and uh, made the change in the default um, uh, default update worker for compliance frameworks for projects. The next one is also on me, support multiple frameworks in project entity file. Uh, so there's a REST API for projects where we can fetch the details of the whole of the project in a single API. Earlier, uh, only one framework, even if there are multiple frameworks associated with the project, only one framework was being written. Now all the associated frameworks are being written in the API. Uh, next one is on, uh, Arsima, deprecate filters arguments in project compliance against GraphQL. Uh, I can talk about this one. So there was there was an issue which Harsima was working on uh, previously. Uh, the argument name was changed from filter to filters, uh, but then he closed the initial MR. Uh, so we just simply closed this issue as not done. The reason for closing this is because we're already working on a new uh, compliance standards dashboard, so you don't want to spend time uh, on this one anymore. Uh, next one is planning issue. Yeah, so, 
Yes, the first time I did. Yes. Uh, so I, I'm currently working on the, uh, like I've created an MR for adding the database tables that are required for supporting the customer deals configuration. Uh, Natalia pointed out a very good question about the security policies that are supposed to be linked to the requirements and frameworks. Uh, so I have a, I have an open discussion. I have also added that in the agenda. Uh, we can discuss that later on. Other than that, the I mean, this is on track. Uh, the MR for adding the database tables is in review, and uh, I've started working on the implementation plan for the uh, GraphQL APIs for creating, uh, creating, updating, and deleting the requirements and checks that the front end needs. Next one is on Sam compliance pipeline to security policy migration. Mm. Nate, do you have any? Uh, yeah, so we've got the um. Sorry, yes, there has been a slight change in scope. So um, when when we were going through the migration flow, um, so we've built it all behind a feature flag, and the plan was to start turning on the feature flag. We have turned it on for specific groups and started testing it and we've realized that we probably need to increase the scope of this work a little bit as it's um, not quite as clear on how the end of the process will finish and they'll have to remove the compliance policy from the framework before the pipeline execution policy will actually take effect so we're just adding that um, final tweaks to it and that'll push out the delivery to 17.4 but I think that's a better UX too rather than trying to just push it out in 17.3 Next one is on Natalia uh, multiple compliance framework leaders <clears throat> Yes so I'm working on this search uh, I don't know filtered an update for the frameworks and uh, oh, for the project report, uh, so um, uh, Hitesh told me that the backend is in MR, uh, like in a draft, right? Yeah, so uh, the MR is ready. I'll be sending it for review by today. Yes, thank you. So I will be able to combine uh, the front end, which I already have with backend uh, this week. Does this involve using new GraphQL APIs? Uh, just asking because we have a policy to roll out, uh, like if, if there's a front end or backend change that requires GraphQL APIs, we have to keep a multi-version deployment. Otherwise it might fail. The or self-managed. Uh, mm -hmm. So Zephyr, the change was in an existing API. It was not okay. a new one. And uh, uh, the change that I am working on right now is, so earlier I had made a, a while uh, if there are multiple compliance framework filters, then the operation was being performed as an OR operation. Now I'm converting it to a back and operation. It is completely backend stuff. So no new API okay. being introduced over there. Yeah, I was just asking. Good question, thanks. So next one is on me. Add compliance adherence requirement for each channel. So I've gone through, uh, I've gone through the adherence checks, had discussion with Josefa, uh, and I'll be uh, starting with the plan implementation for the first channel. I'll uh, also do a small POC on this. Next one is on Sam, uh, third party connector to Sudo. Yeah, no update there. Uh, next one is on Harsimar, Cells 1.0 compliance database tables. Yes, sorry, um, Harsimar had to duck out for this, um, but the feature flag has been turned on. Um, there was an issue found in the code, so we were still using the audit event service in certain for certain order events um so Hasimer has fixed up that bit of the migration and has now turned on the feature flag in production so we've started moving um so we've now started the migration of those ordered events which is great um yeah so we're in there on to the next steps now 
the project controller. Uh, next one is on me. Uh, consolidation of tables for streaming audit events. So I'll be starting with, uh, there's a small leftover MR for uh, HTTP handler is remaining and uh, I'll start with the en enabling of streaming to new destination in this milestone. Next one is on need, comprehensive audit log. Comprehensive yes. audit log. Yeah, uh, just ongoing issues there. Um, so we've added a couple more um, audit events. Mm, next one is on India. Make compliance center available to project subgroups. Yeah, and no update there. Uh, there are no design and queue updates. Uh, for discussions, so Zepha has a discussion open for this. Do you want so, to share or should I share? I can share. Thanks, Nate, for already clarifying the questions. So I, if if you take a look, I mean, if I close this design and if we go down here, somewhere down, there was a comment by uh, Grant, I guess. Yep. So, so initially, I think we had a plan to add like link policies directly to requirements and then they were not anywhere in the framework section. So that's how I had things uh, in my mind, like while designing the, the backend implementation, like a requirement should, multiple policies could be scoped to a requirement. Uh, mm -hmm. And other than that, I didn't have any other relation like uh, between a framework or a, or a policy or something like that. But when I looked at the design that we have here, uh, so this, so this is the edit edit compliance framework uh, page, which means anything here should somehow relate to the framework, like its basic information, the requirements. Mm -hmm. This framework has probably creating the requirements as well, and the policies that are attached to this framework or scoped to this framework, and then the projects that are uh, in this frame, like the projects that have been applied this framework. So uh, at this point, I realized like. Uh, you also have a relation between the compliance framework and the policies. Then I took, uh, took a look at the current code base, and I realized that we do have a uh, we do have a relation between frameworks and security policies right now. So mm -hmm. a framework can have multiple security policies. That's what that's what we have right now. So you can mm -hmm. attach attach multiple like you can create different security policies, and all of these could technically belong to a same framework. So a framework can have multiple security policies. Uh, that's the first thing. And then within the policies, we also have a requirements or requirement fixed uh, heading there. Uh, so th this this bit was a bit like this part was a bit confusing, like whether the framework is whether the policy is attached to the framework scope to the framework, or it also has to uh, like it also has a relation between the requirements, like the pol uh, like a relation for a relation between a policy and a requirement. Um, yes. So yes, <laughs> and I guess uh, going back to Grant's comment, um, that that original mock-up, um, it was the policy associated to the requirement and the requirement associated to the framework. So this is the same association. It's just that Camellia's design, she realized that it'll actually be easier for users to understand it when it's done inside of the policy editing part of the page. So a policy will need to be scoped to a framework to then show up in here. Once it shows up in here, then a user can optionally uh, okay. with, with a particular requirement. Um, makes, make, makes sense. So while creating a framework, we while creating, while creating a framework, we cannot add policies to it because that's not possible. 
Uh, okay, but when a when a policy is created, it can be scoped to a framework, and when yes. it's scoped to a framework, it will automatically come here because we'll know the list of policies that are scoped to this particular framework, and then uh, the user has the option to actually choose uh, the requirement. Like it, the user will have a list of requirements for this framework, and then the user can choose one of the requirements, uh, like from the drop down, which might get scoped to this policy is that what we mean and this and this could also be this could also be like multiple values right? yes yeah m multiple yeah. requirements yeah um and i'm trying to use the word associated because scoped is very much used in our documentation when we talk about scoping um compliance frameworks and policies just there's like a fy uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, so I'll okay. already so from a backend perspective now, I already know the policies that are associated to this framework, mm -hmm. and uh, and from a requirement side, I already know the list of requirements that are that are part of this like that are associated to this framework, and now we just need a relation between the policies and the requirements. So I'll just create a third database table that will have this security policy ID and the requirements ID. And mm -hmm. we have a map there because it's it's a many-to-many -many relation. I mean, this policy could also be scoped to a different framework because this is a group level policy, right? Correct, correct. Yeah, it could, so scope, that, it, it could yeah. also appear in another, uh, another framework. So it's not a one-to-one -one relation. Plus uh, the requirement could also have multiple, like could also be associated to multiple policies. I mean, yes. yeah, it's a two list. So, so that's why we need a third table that will have the, only the foreign keys for these. Uh, yeah, the uh, I get the requirement or I mean the need or the feature request here. I I'll just uh, like I'll I'll work or work on how we should implement it from a backend side, and then uh, I'll reply to your comment there, Natalia, as well. Uh, that you have. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Initially, no I thought there's no relation between a framework and a policy. There's only a relation between the requirement and a policy. But from the code base, I figured out there is an existing relation between a compliance framework and a security policy. Okay. Yes. And in the current um, editing framework, we show all of the policies and then um, a tick next to the ones that are scoped. But in this, I think we're removing all of the ones that are not scoped. So it's yes. just showing the scoped policies, which I think makes it a lot easier and clearer for us. So, I mean, the user has to, uh, the user doesn't have a single flow for all of this. He has to go back and forth. I mean, he has to create a framework, then he has to create a policy, and then he again has to come back to actually attach the requirement to the to that particular policy. Yeah, so this is going to be a multi-step process, and I know Ian and Grant have got some future epics around looking at um, like a one-stop shop and yeah, yeah. improve policies are scoped and, and doing all that sort of stuff, but just yeah yeah something like uh what do we call that like initial onboarding step or something like that where where we just let them configure everything onboarding guide or something like a wizard yeah 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 exactly yeah thanks a lot that was it from my side next one is on nate at the release post yeah, cool. Oh, Natalia, did you have anything to add to the previous conversation? So I know you've done the front end plan. Mm -hmm. No, just agree with uh, everything that was said. Cool. Sweet. Um, yeah, my next point was just um, awesome work. Uh, congrats to Hitesh and Natalia for uh, we've merged the release post for the multiple compliance framework label. I know this has been a much uh, talked about and um, requested feature. So great work, both. Uh, yeah, I think it, it was very fortunate for us uh, that we already had a many-to-many -many relationship for between frameworks and projects at the back end. Otherwise, it would have been a mess. We had to create migrations for everything. I mean, if it had been a one-to-one -one relation between projects and frameworks. We already had a frame project framework setting table, but on the application side, we were just enforcing it to one. 
but at the back end side we already had the ability to create like attach multiple frameworks to a project uh, yeah uh, thank you everyone for attending